Matt here again, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do a propane conversion for a Honda inverter. This one is the 2200i, not to be mistaken for the 2000i. If you do have the 2000i, go and check out my other video. I've done one of these conversions for that one as well. So the reason that I'm so interested in doing this conversion is because I pull my RV with a 4Runner. I don't wanna carry fuel in the back of my 4Runner. I do have propane tanks on the front of my RV already, so wouldn't it be great if I could run this inverter right off my propane tanks that are on the front of my RV? I do have lithium batteries, and a lot of people say, why don't you just use lithium and solar? I do use some of that, but we do a lot of boondocking in very hot locations. And to be honest, those lithium batteries can only last so long, especially when you have the AC running all night long. So I'm pretty excited about this upgrade. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this conversion today. Trust me, it's nice and simple. If you're at all handy, you could do this yourself. Just follow those instructions very carefully. I should also mention that if you are interested in getting one of these conversion kits, I've left a link to the product in the comment section below. So you can check that out for yourself, get one of your own, and uh, let's get going. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is what actually comes with the kit when you buy it. Um, and it pretty much comes with everything that you're going to need. So we've got our propane lines, we have our propane regulator, that all comes along with it. You do get a new sticker for the front for your on and off. You do get some new gaskets for your carburetor. You don't always need to replace those, but um, I'll show you in a little bit if your gaskets are in good shape, you can reuse them. If not, you get those in there. There's some hardware here as well that we're going to need throughout the project. Some covers, some plastic covers for some of our lines so they don't chafe. And this comes with a really, really great instruction manual. The first page that we see here is the tool list. And there is quite the list of tools. You can see them all outlined here. And I've actually laid out my tools out on the table here as well. But if you do any kind of um, handy work on your own, you probably have most of these tools. They're all pretty standard stuff. As we continue through, see a few more tools there that you're going to need. And then the installation instructions are great because they're all pictorial. So not only is there text associated with the instructions, you get a visual for every single step of the way. But that being said, I'm hoping that this video will help you with your install as well. And as always, if you do have some comments that I didn't cover in this video, don't leave, uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So that's one of the things, the other paperwork that comes along with this is the first time startup instructions. So make sure that once you're done your conversion and you're ready to start this up, follow these instructions carefully. There's a few settings that you need to make sure are correct before you try to start this up on propane. All right, so now that you know all about that, why don't we get started with the installation? All right, so first thing we're gonna do is take the front cover off here. There's just one single screw that needs to be loosened up and then that cover pops right off just like that put the cover aside for now and the next thing that we're going to need to do is access access the uh, carb area which is behind this air box so we're going to need to take off the cover for the air box again just one single screw there then we're going to need to take out a couple bolts and then there's another bolt that we're going to find behind this air box so one thing we have to do before we get too far is we've got to mark the hole where we're going to have our elbow for our propane connection. So it's going to go right around here, but they show you how to mark it in the instructions. What they tell you to do is put some masking tape down across these two ribs, and then we're going to position our washer. So I'll show you how we're going to do that now. Start by placing that tape and we're going to center it between those two ribs. And there's some really great visuals in the installation instructions for this as well. So we're going to take that down and then we're going to take one of the washers, which we're later going to install, and we're going to place that so that the washer, the inner hole of the washer is right on the edge of that tape. And we're going to do it about a quarter inch from the edge here. So it looks like the washer is in the right spot. We're gonna mark the center of that hole. And now we can pull off that tape. And now we're gonna be able to pull off the air box and move on to the next step. And 
and we're going to come back to that hole or that marking later on to actually drill a hole. All right, so we've got three bolts that we've got to take off first. Here, here, and here. All right, so now that those bolts are off, we're gonna very carefully slide off the uh, airbox assembly. All right, so now that we have that off, we can see one of our first carb seals and we're looking to see if that's still in good shape. And like I mentioned earlier, it does come with some new seals if you do need to replace them. However, in this case, this looks like it's in really good shape. So we're just gonna set that aside and reuse it afterwards. And we're gonna need to gently remove that carb off of there as well. we go just like that and we have another gasket at the back there you can see the blue gasket and again you're going to check to make sure that that's in good condition as well in this case it is so we'll reuse it and uh, now we've got to take off the gasket and a couple more bolts on the bottom and top and that's because we want to replace these two bolts with longer bolts that come with the package seal at the back there that we can check make sure it's in good condition this one's looking good as well so we'll reuse that also and the next thing that we need to do we're going to take these are the ones that we just pulled out and the kit does come with two new longer bolts so we're going to replace with those two longer bolts now now the two small bolts that we pulled out of that, um, the, uh, the company that sells this conversion kit does recommend that you change those out with some new bolts that they send with the packaging. Apparently these do have a habit of loosening up over time. So we're gonna replace it with the ones that were sent by them. Here we go, this guy right here. And uh, Grenergy also recommends that you put just a tiny bit of super glue right on the tip of that just to really hold it in place well. So now that the bolts are back in, we can reinstall the, uh, the gaskets. Now you really have to make sure that the gaskets are going on in the same orientation as they came off of. So that's really one thing that you're gonna need to pay close attention to. So we'll get that first gasket on. Then we're gonna pop the car back on there. And then the next gasket onto the front. So just slide that back over the new bolts that we just installed. Just like that. Throw our other gasket back on again. Okay, so with our car back on, we are now ready to drill the hole in the top of our compartment. And this is where the elbow is gonna go for our propane connection. Now you wanna make sure that you're covering all of this area so that we don't end up getting any little plastic tidbits into this compartment area when we start to drill. So we're gonna cover that area um, with some, uh, some good heavy duty paper towels or rags, and uh, then we'll be able to drill the hole. All right, so now that we've got the hole in the top, we're ready to install the propane tube. That's gonna go from the hole. We're gonna attach this elbow at the top here, and the other end is gonna go onto the end of the carburetor before we reinstall the airbox assembly. And actually, before we install that propane tube into the compartment, we're actually going to put on 
the plastic covers onto the fuel line. So they give you these plastic covers just to make sure that with all the vibration from this, that you don't end up with friction between your new propane line and these fuel lines. And over time that, that would start to degrade. Okay, so we've got the plastic covers on. So we're gonna start by installing our propane tube with our elbow on top. So remember, you're gonna have a washer on the bottom of that, and you're also gonna have a washer on top. And you're simply gonna twirl that tube to tighten it up onto your elbow at the top. So we've done some tightening by hand. Now we are going to tighten the rest of it using this wrench. All right, so now that we've got our elbow installed on the top, the propane tube running behind the fuel lines here and around, we're gonna connect it to this end of the carb. That'll slide onto those bolts and then we'll need to put another one of those gaskets and this time one of the gaskets that came in the kit onto the, uh, the front of that. Again, verify that orientation before you put the gasket on. And now we can go ahead and put the airbox assembly back on. All right, so some other hardware that you get with the kit is a new bolt for the airbox, and it comes with a spacer behind as well, because if you remember, this is pushed out a little further now. So we've got to place the spacer behind the airbox, and then the bolt will go back in this bottom hole here. Okay, so we've got that first bolt in with the spacer and back, and now we're gonna put nuts on these two bolts up here. Okay, so now we can put our filter back in the bottom and our cover back on. So we're nearing completion now. Um, one of the last steps is to install some vents into the uh, inverter compartment. Um, so the inverter or the kit that we have does come complete with these little guys here that uh, will install one in the cover on this side and then one in the spark plug cover on the top here. So let's do that next. And this is the nice part about the instructions. You can see very clear pictures of where you need to um, place that center hole for your, uh, for your vent. And you can use that razor blade that it tells you to have available in the tool list just to clean up the edges here a little bit. And we can pop that in and they do recommend that you uh, place some hot glue around the back as well. So same thing for the vent holes on the front cover. We can see from the pictures exactly where to place the center line. We'll look at that. And we've just got to cut back those ribs a little bit just to give us some space for a pilot hole. All right, so before we actually do a test, um, we wanna make sure that all of the settings on the generator are correct before we even connect the propane tank. And those are all outlined in these first time setup instructions. So a few things to keep in mind. So our eco throttle on the side here needs to be off, which it is. Our fuel vent at the top here needs to be off, which it also is. Our choke needs to be fully off, which it also is. And then if we look down here at our little gauge, we have an off position, we have a natural gas propane position and an on position. So we're just gonna turn that up to the natural gas propane position. And 
Now we are going to be ready to connect to the propane and test this out. And one more thing that I should add is that the instructions do indicate that it's really important that you make sure that all of the gas is ran dry or emptied from the carb float bowl before you actually try this out. So make sure you've ran it dry first before you try to use it on propane. So we'll connect the propane tank regulator to the propane tank that comes along with this. And it does need to stay in the upright position the whole time it's in use. So just make sure it's positioned in that upright position. You can use your quick connect to connect it to the generator. And they do say to keep the propane tank about uh, two to three feet away from the generator and never behind the generator. We're ready to turn your propane tank on. And then we're going to have to prime this regulator three times. So you're gonna press it slowly. And you'll hear a hiss each time. And now we're ready to test this out. All right, let's test this baby out. And just like that, we have a generator running off propane. Pretty awesome. So there you have it. That's how you do the installation of one of these conversion kits. If you come back from our, our next video, we're gonna do some load testing using this propane tank and this inverter to see what kind of stuff it could run on on this RV behind us. And as usual, if there's any questions that you have that I didn't answer in this video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And as a reminder, if you want one of these kits, go to Grenergy, there's a link below and uh, you can go and buy one of these kits of your own. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It really does help us out. And don't forget to come back tomorrow to see where we go next.